The dense god Ushko oscillations are only one type of example in which rapid on-off conditions are natural occurrences for electric plasma phenomena. The UFO phenomenon is another example of the same type. Many cases of UFO sightings have been reported. Many have been photographed. But note, what has been photographed conforms perfectly to the shape of the electromagnetic pool type structure that forms the primer fields, which in turn form a sphere of concentrated plasma at their focal point. This happens to be the typical shape that has been captured in UFO photographs. We see the bowl type electromagnetic structure and the plasma sphere at the focal point of it. Both are clearly visible in this photograph. Reports say that the UFOs suddenly appear, that they can stand still and that they can move quickly. They are seen existing in space and are seen even hovering above the moon. They can accelerate immensely fast in their movement and make extremely sharp sudden turns. They can do all this because the so-called UFOs are not spaceships, but are electromagnetic phenomena that have no mass that would impede such movements. They are merely shapes created by electromagnetic interaction of plasma flowing in the atmosphere and in space, which can become visible when the conditions are right. Some are seen as moving points of light, even pulsating light. Some even appear in groups. By being electric plasma concentrations, the UFO phenomenon also reflects radio waves, whereby it can be seen on radar. However, when aircraft are launched to intercept, the electric field around the aircraft affects the field that forms the UFO, which thereby changes its position, or causes it to simply vanish. All this makes interception quite impossible. Of course, interception is also impossible for the simple reason that no UFO craft does actually exist. Extraterrestrial visitors traveling in a physical spacecraft to our planet would have to fly against all the known laws of the physical universe and time. It would take a spacecraft 12,000 years to reach the Earth from our closest star, flying at a speed of 360,000 kilometers per hour, which is roughly 30 times the speed of the Apollo 11 flight to the Moon, which might be the limit for spacecraft velocities moving against the plasma background in space. Exotic theories have been invented in attempts to sidestep the physical limits and barriers in attempts to support the UFO theory, while the obvious reality is simply being ignored. In real terms, the UFO phenomenon stands as an example of electromagnetic structures that form in space with gigantic effects and in the atmosphere with minute effects, all formed by the primer fields that are dynamically created in electric plasma streams. The UFOs thus become comparable to the sprites that appear in the upper atmosphere. The resulting effects, of course, depend on the coincidence of conditions that enable them, which are inherently rare and fragile in nature and are specific 
for the type of atmosphere in which they occur. When the conditions are satisfied in the lower atmosphere, they often enable a number of small plasma events simultaneously, which then become regarded as multiple UFO sightings. The fragility of the sprites in the stratosphere and UFO events in the lower atmosphere evidently also applies to the complex structures and magnetic fields that create the conditions for our sun to be electrically powered. When the conditions are right, the fields form. And when the conditions no longer exist, the formed fields vanish. Both the UFO phenomenon and the dance god Ishka oscillations illustrate to some degree how fragile the conditions inherently are that affect the powered state of a star, especially that of a small star as our sun. The powered state of the sun has actually been a rather rare occurrence in the last two million years of the great ice ages. The few long periods that have the sun constantly active, called the interglacial periods, merely interrupt the normal dark and cold world of the long ice ages that only few people have come through alive. The same fragile nature that applies to our solar system also applies to the UFO phenomenon. It is not coincidental, therefore, that the UFO sightings became most frequent from the 1950s on through the 1990s, when the current Danska Oeschke pulse had peaked, when the solar activity was the strongest in recent times in which the electric conditions on the Earth were likewise the strongest. With the electric environment around our Sun now getting rapidly weaker again, according to the downramping that the Ulysses satellite has reported, we appear to have entered a transition zone of extremely fragile conditions. The solar system as an UFO is on a path to the vanishing point. The critical warning that science affords us on this basis, unfortunately, is not precise to the day, nor in exact details. Still, the downramping that one sees in many areas happening simultaneously presents strong points of scientific correlation of the numerous elements that the astrophysical arena can provide that points towards a big phase shift in the making. The exact day for the sun reverting to its unpowered state cannot be determined, but do we need to know the day of the event? when the principle is known and the dynamics of its manifestations are known. The evidence that we have before us presents a strong case for us all to make extreme efforts towards building the vast new infrastructures that our continued existence on this planet will most certainly depend on. It is tempting to assume that only the far northern regions and countries like Canada, Europe, Russia and China are affected by the coming Ice Age transition in which the sun becomes inactive. This is a foolish assumption. When the sun turns dim and the food supply is collapsing, the entire world is affected. 
thus it becomes the task of humanity as a whole to build the infrastructure to protect human existence on this planet, not to act decisively on this front amounts to committing universal suicide. The changing astrophysical environment that affects our world will affect everything. It affects even the magnitude of earthquakes. It is highly likely on this front, too, that we haven't seen anything yet in terms of consequences, which, of course, we can avoid by placing our civilization afloat onto the sea. Thank you.